Well, good Friday morning. Happy Friday to you. Uh, looks like things are going to be a little bit better for us here today. Well, at least uh, when I did the radio show, there's a little bit of green on the screen. We like to see that, especially over the last few days when it feels like I'm coming out of the kitchen giving everybody a nice cold bowl of oatmeal. Uh, nobody likes to hear what I've got to sell. Let's take a look and see what we've got so far overnight. Let's bring up that corn board. Uh, what is corn doing? Well, it was up a couple of cents uh, on the, during the radio, and it still is. Two and a half cents better at a 3.93 and three quarters. Dees up three and a quarter. See, this is what I don't like. Dees is up three and a quarter cents to 4.08 and a quarter. I started the show Monday morning at 4.09. And so we're up three and a quarter cents, and we're not even back to where I started the show Monday morning. 4.08 and a quarter is last there. That's the new crap, Dees. All right, here we go. Well, at least I should be happy about a 3% percent rally on the open. Uh, soybeans. They're four and a quarter to six and a half cents better there. Uh, August is up six and a half. Uh, let's go to September's up six and a half to 1047 and a quarter. Novi new crop, that's up a nickel at 1048 even. And there you go. That's what's happening in beans overnight. Chicago wheat overnight, they all, they all bounced a little bit. Here we go. SEP's up eight and a half cents to 543 and three quarters. D sets up nine cents to 569 even and an eight and three quarter cent rally in the March to 589 and a half. Let's move out from Chicago wheat to the hard red in Kansas City. We're up about six cents across the board. SEP's up six and three quarter cents, though, to 569 and a half. Move out to the March, that's up six cents there to 598 and a quarter. Trying to put a six handle on that stuff. We've got one in May and July, but we'll see if we can do March as well. All right, that's hard red in Kansas City. Let's move on. Spring wheat in Minneapolis. Nine cents better bid there. 609 and a half is last. That's September. Uh, then we move, move out to the March. That's up eight cents to 644 and a half. So that's the spring wheat in Minneapolis. And then finally, Let's take a look. Cotton. Cotton was, I think, lower during the show. Yeah, it was. 50, 50 points lower to 71.43. All right, let's bring him in. We can't start the day without him, and that's Brian Hoops. He's the president of Midwest Market Solutions out in um, somewhere in Springfield, Missouri, I think. Yeah. Um, all right. It looks like you're traveling around right now. Who knows? Um, where are you at? Yeah, you're right. Uh, RJ O'Brien has their brokers conference today, and uh, I am actually in Kansas City for that. So that's going on this weekend. We'll run into uh, PJ Quaid, I'm sure, later today, if he can get a flight out of Chicago. That's going to be the big issue, I think, today. Well, if uh, if Jerry's there, I don't know if he'll show up, but tell him I said hi. And uh, I will. There's a lot of other. Uh, I, you know, I used to I used to have an office there for a little while. We, we used to clear RJ O'Brien back 25 years ago. So um, back yes, when sir. I thought I was old. Now I'm really old. <laughs> uh, all right. What do you think? What's going on? What are your thoughts here? Well, yeah, it is a more of a technical morning than anything. There's, you know, very little fundamental news to push these markets right now, other than the weather. So we're kind of left in a real choppy trading range. You mentioned uh, corn 408, 409 on Monday. Yeah, it's because we've been trading 403 to 412 this entire week. That's just the trading range that we've been in. And usually markets have big moves and they consolidate and they have big moves again. So we're in that consolidation mode, kind of getting ready for another big move. Um, wheat's had a little bit of a bounce this week, kind of the upside leader. And typically when we get harvest in the Pacific Northwest to in, in increase and, and uh, become more intense, we'll get some better export business out of the Pacific Northwest. And so we're seeing that uh, trade happening. There's news out of France that their wheat crop has been downgraded, lowest conditions since 2016. And we're maybe getting an uptick from that. But you know, other than that, you know, soybeans dropped to new lows overnight and now they're or yesterday and then they started to come back and just more of a technical trade than anything without a lot of conviction or direction one way or the other uh so yeah i mean i, I can't disagree with anything you said there my, my concern is well not my concern but i'm just I, i'm just happy to see us not go lower anymore you know if we can just go sideways for a little bit and that would be a good technical correction for me but i oh, i just can't help thinking because of where i come from what's going to get the producer a little bit more cash here. What's going to rally these markets? And there's just not a lot out there. Unfortunately, that's the case. Yeah, we we just you know don't really have anything weather-wise on the horizon that suggests that we could go into a real hot, long period of dry spell or anything like that that would lift prices. Um, I think producers have to look at their local basis levels, and if they're fairly tight because no one else is selling probably an indication you need to be selling. If you still have some of this old crap laying around, you don't want to be caught with that if the basis starts to weaken or we, or we take another leg lower because um, that's when everybody else is going to start to sell. So, you know, everybody would like a 20, 30, 40 cent rally to sell their old crap inventories on. I don't know if we're going to have that happen just because of the massive amounts of crap that's going to hit the market if we even get to a 10, 15 cent rally. And it's just a bad spot to be in where you know you've got a time frame to sell. And then you, now... You know, they used to do that in the old days in the pit when July was going off the board, right? The last day trading in July, 
and some of these yeah. big accounts overseas would give five brokers a, a ton of, of corn to sell on the close. So you're sitting there standing with five other guys that know, you, you know, they've got, you know, two to 4,000 contracts each to sell as well as you. And you don't want to look bad, right? So if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're the last guy to start offering your corn, even if it's not even in the closing bell, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to get another order again. And it's, so that's why I feel like these guys are like, they're, they're all looking at each other like, who's going to go first here? Because we're not going to see these prices if we all start going together right now, right? Right. Yeah. And I think you really, from a farmer perspective, if we get a 15 cent rally and you want to sell your cash, well, everybody's probably going to want to sell cash. And what's that going to do to the basis? It's going to widen back out because they are getting product at that point in time. So, you know, you're, you're better off looking at looking ahead, making these sales now with a tighter basis. And if you want to be bullish, then you reown it on paper with uh, futures or options. You, you still have your upside. You've got a, your cash, uh, you know, can pay bills with. You, you've sold at a tight basis. Nobody wants to sell at the low. And we're just kind of languishing near yeah. these lows in, in both corn and beans. That's kind of the issue right now. All right. Stay right there. Uh, we're going to go away. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and talk more with Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back. Let's uh, talk about what we had happening in the livestock over, uh, not overnight, from yesterday's close, right? I always get caught up there. Let's take a look at live cattle. What did we do yesterday? It wasn't a good day, folks. We were down about a 250 across the board, except for August. August was only down $2.02 .02 to 182.25. Dece was down $2.32 to 184.97. Boy, oh boy. Uh, that was live cattle. Let's take a look at feeders. Uh, they too were off about that much as well. August down two dollars and thirty-two cents to two fifty-six twenty-two, while the October was off two dollars and forty-five cents to two fifty-six ninety-five. Uh, and we going out the deferreds. We're off, you know, another two two thirty-five to two thirty-seven. No real respite there. Let's take a look at lean hogs. We we'll get back to our guest analyst. This is mixed, and I'm not quite sure. I mean, August down twenty-seven cents to ninety-one thirty-seven. October up thirty-five cents to seventy-four oh two, and then Dees down seventeen cents to. 65.70. Maybe Brian Oops can explain that to me, but I don't see that very often. Let's bring him back in. Brian, thanks uh, for sticking around. Uh, what are the prospects here for the meat markets today, this morning? I, I can't explain the hogs. You know, they're they're just kind of an <laughs> animal of their own. It's just they make no sense most of the time. I think your best explanation is there was obviously some spread trade going on. Yeah. Uh, in the you know between the, the traders there, they, they don't trade a lot of fundamentals. They trade a lot of technical action. Um, the cattle market does trade fundamentals. We've been talking about the fundamentals <clears throat> turning bearish. We saw that this week. We saw the futures finally kind of concede to it and give back a week of gains um, with one fell swoop yesterday. But the cutouts are, are lower to mixed. A cash trade was steady to lower. Uh, your slaughter pace is going to come in lower this week. We've had some clients tell us uh, uh, the big packer out of Nebraska is starting to cut some kills. They cannot move the boxes, so they're cutting Friday's kills and Saturday's kills. Uh, just because they don't need the extra meat, and that could in turn back us up. So we had steer weights out yesterday. They're another five pounds heavier uh, than the previous week. We continue to add that tonnage, uh, and, and weights typically go up this time of year, and they're probably going to continue to rise because of the cheap corn that we're talking about. Um, but that should also equal strong demand for our feeder calves. We saw a big drop yesterday. You can't rule out that we're going to see additional weakness over the next couple of weeks as this consumer demand softens up at the retail levels. I agree. Can't argue with any of that. Thank you very much. If you see anybody that I know, say uh, tell them I said hi. Uh, thanks I for being on that. there, Brian. Brian Hoops from Midwest Market Solutions. He's in Kansas City for the RGO convention. That's, they do that every year. Yeah, that so. good catering. 